You never get a second chance to make a final impression. The last week of Pac-12 women's volleyball is underway. And for Utah and Stanford, it is their first meeting of the season. Welcome to Pac-12 Volleyball presented by Tatcha Carr. We look at the leaders inside the conference. Stanford, just one loss on the year. Utah, winners of three straight. Welcome inside, everybody. Kevin Barnett alongside a man who coached multiple decades on this campus, Don Shaw. And Don, let me ask you about Stanford. They have wrapped up the Pac-12 conference title, but they still have things to accomplish. What are they looking for in this match? Well, they're looking for a top four seed. I mean, the ability to host four rounds before you get to the final four is huge. And if they don't host, then they're going to have to travel quite a ways. For Stanford all season long, it has been the real deal. Catherine Plummer on the outside. Here's a player, 6'6", six, six, and offensively unstoppable at times. Well, Catherine Plummer, to me, has been the most consistent top hitter of any of the top teams in the country. She hits a heavy ball. She moves the ball around. She can block. She can serve. She can pass. She's been a really outstanding player for the Cardinal all season long. For Utah, the question for them has been how to get out of the doldrums of the season. They've done it, winners of three straight. How have they done it? Well, they, they did lose five out of six at one point during the season, but they've snapped out of that. I think they're serving much tougher, and they're actually running their offense with more efficiency. They're able to get their middles involved, and their middles are outstanding. The Cardinal and the Utes facing off. Just one match remaining for each of them following this one. Stanford, the Cardinal already going dancing. They look for a top four spot. Spike Night presented by Tachikara has made its way down University Ave. Already a light for the holiday season as this pre-Thanksgiving matchup gets underway. Welcome back to Utah versus Stanford as we go to our Tachikara starting lineups. First for Kevin Hamley in season number one, taking over the defending national champs. Moretta Lutz at the opposite, perhaps the key in terms of her offensive production, but watch their passing game. Kevin Hambly says if we pass the ball well, we're in good shape. On the other side for Utah and Beth Lanier, her 28th year having piloted this program through many conference titles, then into the Pac-12. She sends an experienced group to the floor. Senior night honored Tawny Lua Falimana, Adora and I, and Carly Truman on the opposing side. Kevin Barnett back with Don Shaw, who coached the men and the women at this university as we get underway. Final regular season tilt for the Stanford Cardinal. Jenna Gray, sophomore setter, leads in aces. It's a hybrid serve, and it misses right off the bat. Well, right off the bat, got Adora and I matched up against Moretta Lutz. So that's going to be an interesting matchup for these uh, this first set. Three Who's rotations full. Brianna Dorman steps back to serve the libero. Who set that matchup up is what you have to wonder. Lutz rejected right off the top. That's outside number 12, Berkeley Oblad, closing the block next to Kinsey Kerber. Well, in answer to your question, Kevin, I think that th both these teams normally start in these rotations, so I don't think there was a real matchup issue that there may be later on in this match. People starting where they want to start in the wheel. Plummer sent back, and it's the Utah block on the first two swings. Dora Anai, OT, Coffin Corner. Took that one over a laddie. Pretty nice high swing, good high contact point. And that deep corner is golden. Always has been, always will be. That's OTCC for those abbreviating everything <laughs> in the modern <laughs> vernacular. <laughs> Little chip over the top, dug up. Tough swing for Lutz, couple of contacts, but it goes down. And this is a hot start for Utah, who's up 4-0. Hot start for Utah, not a great start for Moretta Lutz. Saw this at Washington State uh, two weeks ago. Lutz off to a rough beginning, and it was Washington State taking the first set big. Tough serving. An eye with the dig, could not put it away. Inside the block goes Catherine Plummer, first point on the board for the Stanford Cardinals. That's a heck of a shot by Catherine Plummer. Not a great approach. Had to kind of bounce out to get underneath that ball and then took it sharp cross court. That's Catherine not... Plummer, sophomore, probable Pac-12 player of the year in many people's minds. Oh 
Middle attack is good, Tammy Alade. Well, Kenzie Korver lost, lost that track of where that ball went. She could have played that ball off the block. They're going to try to use Alade in the, in the rallies when they get a chance to. They've got to open up the outsides and get her going. She really hasn't played all that well in, in recent matches. Alade well, is so good in the early part of the year. Backslide, it looked good in warm-up, but so far Stanford's been all over it. Anai well off the net, and that one well long. Can't make a living and, and uh, really get a job done hitting balls that far off the net on a regular basis. The matchup Utah likes here is, is Berkeley Oblad running that slide against Megan McClure. Good pass. Oblad with the tip, and it's Lutz. Boy, Oblad ran a marathon to get to that one. Touch off the block is good. Count the kill for Kenzie Kerber. Utah with a couple of lefties that they can use. If they run their 6-2 or depending on the 5-1, they're going to try to sneak. Danny Barton will be the other player coming in that opposite spot. Tough serving from Utah, and that was highlighted for us by Beth Lanier. And asking her how they got out of the slump. But you're facing a Stanford block. You could go right back into the slump. Aladdy got straight over on that one. That was a nice move. Uh, Lutz setting the block. She's not moving at all. She's just out there waiting. But Aladdy did a nice job of closing. The Cardinal with the best spread in the conference. They are first in the Pac-12 in their own hitting percentage and first in their opponent's hitting percentage. And it's not even close. Straight down block number two. That time Lutz with all of it. Cardinal hitting 313 and their opponents hitting 178 because of plays like this. Well, Moretta Lutz, you can see her. She's just right there waiting, only takes a sidestep. And when she seals the top of the net, she's over on the other team's side quite a ways. Moretta Lutz, six foot eight. Backslide. Long. Trying to take advantage of Megan McClure in the left front. Utah hits wide. Oblad was surprised that that ball wasn't in. She hit it and then went back to celebrate with teammates and was caught by surprise when she found out that was a... And here comes the challenge card from Beth Lanier. Not sure whether they're going to try for the touch challenge or for the in-out challenge. We will wait for the indication, but in any case, we know you get three challenges. Three challenges per match now. Utah will challenge the ball contacting a player. Three challenges per match, regardless of outcome. You don't keep them like the international system. Ball touch, contact with a player, four hits, those types of things. Net touches, ball in or out, foot faults. So a little bit different rules, and they'll see all the same looks that we see in terms of our video replay capabilities here on the Pac-12 Network. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether the, uh, the down ref gets to get a, 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 a little bit closer view of that, but that didn't look like a touch to me unless it caught Plummer on the way out. That also could be close on both accounts. Don't see any fingers bending back as the ball passes by here. I wonder how long it is to end up with the Hawkeye system and the dedicated end zone cams you see in the international game. Seems to be only a matter of time. Pac-12 waiting for all the teams to adopt the replay system, period. Eight of the franchises now with the replay system in play after two last year. Heading in the right direction. Just got to get things cleaned up a little bit. It seems down shot both internationally and also collisionally, it tends to clean up some of the aftermath from a, a quote, bad call because right. there is some sort of resolution to it. Some sort of resolution. You know, sometimes you see that, you know, they change a call that you really can't figure out how they changed it. But uh, like I said, there could be a little bit more uh, closer end shot that the down ref is getting to, getting to see, you can zoom in a little bit. That was a tough one to see if that's what they were looking for. Evidently, that's what they were looking for was the touch at the net. You know, I mentioned the hitting percentages for Stanford. On the other side for Utah, they are third in the Pac-12 in their own hitting percentage at 256, substantially less than that of Stanford. However, right. they're holding their opponents to 189. That is second in the conference. This is another team Beth Lanier has put on the floor, capable and got off to an amazing start in yeah. conference play. Yeah, and I think that recently um, Beth let us know that 
they're serving much better now. You don't notice it in the numbers. It's not like they're any serving aces and errors and all that are popping out at you. But, you know, you can be serving effectively. What coaches look for more anyway is point scoring in each rotation. They're not yeah. really looking to see, you know, aces versus errors and any kind of ratio like that. They just want to see in this rotation, are we scoring points and how are we doing it? Points per serve is what you're looking for in terms of a server number as the play stands as called. Stanford up one now. Right back to that back slide. Transition and it's Lutz, and this is where Stanford is so strong. Right, they, they're going to create point scoring opportunities, not only with serving teams out of out of their system, but getting touches on the block. You see all three hitters transition well, and, they, and they're all in position to hit. 7-1 run for the Cardinal. Roll over the top, Ooh. and everybody is there. That was almost a face-to-face -face with McClure and Gray there. That was like a family getting together for Thanksgiving dinner. And that'll be a throw. Double contact called by Kim Pickering, our up official. 8-5. So you can count the run right now. 8-1. Just take Stanford's score and put one on the other side. Kim Pickering retiring after 38 years as a volleyball referee. He, this will be his final match in the Pac-12. You get an opportunity to choose the venue as well as your partner for your final match as an eye gets that kill there. Sid Church, our R2, chosen by Kim Pickering. Yep. Kim, it might career. predate you. Yeah, well, he didn't predate me. I remember actually <laughs> when he was a, an assistant coach at USC before he got into refereeing. And how'd that work out? Uh, that's too far away to remember. <laughs> Adora and I back to the line. Another one of those players could be. Pac-12 player of the year. That ball rolls right in front of an eye, and Stanford carrying the three-point advantage. Well, they targeted Plummer on that one, trying to get her in trouble passing. That was a great pass by Catherine Plummer. Teams have gone after Plummer. Oh, yeah, and for good reason. She's struggled in certain matches, uh, even though some matches they've still managed to win. Here comes Kate Formico. As of late, serving well, 18 aces, nearly 19 there. Gray with the first contact. McClure with the final contact, but long. Interesting that Utah, a lot of times when they keep Bailey Choi in the front row, they'll just back her out. She won't block. They'll let Oblat go over there all by herself and go one-on-one. -on -one. Utah runs a 5-1 until they don't. Yeah. At some point, they do bring in the 6-2 in a lot of sets. But it is not the regular rotation that you see with so many teams on a 6-2. Lower unloading. Come on, lefty, that's what you're there for. Longest rally of this young match continues. No, it does not. McClure, who lately seems to have more pop in yeah, her swing. She really does. Uh, she's come along, uh, really given them what they've really needed the very beginning of the season. That's what the, the big question mark was, was that second outside hitter position. Megan McClure on a Santa Margarita Catholic down in Southern California. Serves that ball just outside the coffin corner. An outstanding freshman contributor on a team that saw so many freshman contributors last season in that run to the national title. Bailey Choi, setter now in the back row. A lot of young setters in this conference, Troy among them. Gray also just a sophomore here for Stanford. Plummer cracks it. And you get an idea that Catherine Plummer does not need a lot of space to develop a lot of heat. Well, they brought that set in a little more of a rip set into the inside, and uh, the block just set up just slightly too far outside. And if you give her that much cross court, you're going to hear a large thump. Utah finally in the middle is Tony Luafoimana with the kill. Transfer to the College of Southern Idaho for last season. This is her senior year. She's the prototypical shorter but very quick middle player, middle hitter, middle blocker. Played her junior ball down in Los Angeles out of Carson, California. Bad pass, and it's Plummer once again being served. 
just finds a way to chip it off the hands. Catherine Plummer, an outstanding beach athlete, and so many times you see that creep into the indoor game. Kenzie Carter really didn't need to block on that one. She had no chance to hit that ball. There she is with her underhand. She just needed somebody to stick their hands up there. The freshman obliged. Yep. She'll learn. Stanford missing serves. Back to Plummer, who didn't have to pass and could just swing. Hits it right over the top of the Utah block as Beth Lanier looks on. 28th year, 13 appearances, most recent of which have come out of the Pac-12. It took a couple of years as the team moved from the Mountain West into this much more competitive conference, the number one RPI conference in the nation, as another Stanford service goes long. Beth Lanier spends a lot of her summers coaching USA national team programming. Lots of times with fellow coaches, Jed Greeny from Washington State. Right. A couple of seasons ago, a couple of summers ago. Gerber hits Plummer again. You can see the strategy. And now I one on one. High into the corner. That might not have been over Lutz. Around Lutz at least. First season for Kevin Hambly coming over from Illinois where he was for eight years, going to the national title. Gets the opportunity to take over last year's national title winner. It's not often you get that in your first season somewhere, Don. It's always nice to walk in and see, open up the cupboard, and there's plenty in there. A nine, another high swing. No touch called, and it's out of bounds. Off a nice take from Shannon Scully, who's in there. Well, just like any other top outside hitter that plays against Stanford, that block is uh, in her head. I mean, there's definitely, you can tell it's affecting her. Set over Gray all over it. That ball way too far off the net. Somebody was in the net on that one. That ball is out of bounds. Finally, a kill for Beretta Lutz. Thirty-eight years. It all comes down to tonight for Kim Pickering. He's hoping we go five. Are you? Maximum volleyball entertainment, perhaps. It's the Cardinal early. Praise volleyball on the Pac-12 Network. It is the Tatakara scoreboard update and USC over Oregon, three sets to one. That was in Eugene. And more losing going on up there in Oregon. LA dominating. UCLA sweeps Oregon State after a tough first set ending what was a terrific win streak for the Beavers. Yeah, the Beavers have been playing really, really well. I mean, just a very solid team. Nothing spectacular from anybody out there except for maybe Mary Kate Marshall. But aside from her, just a really solid and a very young team. Their assistant coach, Ron Zwerver, one of the all-time great outside hitters in the world, going in the Volleyball Hall of Fame this last weekend. And he still looks like he can bring it. I had his match last week. Right, he is a big dude. Well, that Hall of Fame, if you don't know, located in Holyoke, Massachusetts, birthplace of volleyball, very close to Stanford, or part of Stanford, Stam Springfield. Springfield. Springfield, where basketball was invented. Naismith and Morgan, contemporaries, as a matter of fact. An eye inside, cracking the ball. That's nothing they imagined when they called it Mintonette. <laughs> they uh, just, she had just enough opening there between Fitzmorris and Lutz. She needs to get untracked, but they really need to handle the ball and get, get some good swings. So far, not very many good locations for a lot of their swings. A set that started 4-0 for Utah and quickly went to 11-8 Stanford. It's just a three-point difference. Lutz very high. Someone's in the net, and it's a U. Well, Utah's gone to the 6-2 now. They made the switch. Danny Barton's in there now for Bailey Choi. Cameron Machado in setting. Probably going to see Truman. Reaching over the top, it's Morris. 
We'll get the benefit of the call. What do you think about that one, Doc? Well, we got uh, the down ref called a net on Cameron Machado before the over violation, evidently. 18 13, Stanford. Oh, tough serve. This is what you can't do with Stanford. Let's give them free ball opportunities. And you can add in to the attack line, Jenna Gray. That is her 62nd kill of the year. She hasn't been as necessary doing that recently than and she was early in the season. Tammy Aladdy has been giving him a little more offense out of the middle and her, her uh, numbers as far as an attacker has have gone way down since the beginning of the year. Timeout called by Utah. We mentioned that it was senior night here, and Moretta Lutz, the only senior for Stanford University tonight. Well, what a career it's been. A player that started as a red shirt, kind of got things right physically at her size at 6'8", and has been a force. She really has improved um, unbelievably. I, I followed this program pretty closely over these last four or five years, and at the very beginning of her career, I wasn't sure whether she could ever um, really help this team, and then she just has steadily gotten better and better and better, worked very, very hard. She's just Deserved all the honors that she's gotten. Played in the middle, now playing opposite, switching positions. And hitting the left side in a couple of rotations where they've moved blockers around, and, and she's in there in rotation one, and, and she's improved at that as well. Missed the first five matches of this year with an ankle injury, but has been 100% since. And if you wonder the impact of Morella, she's hitting 324 on the year. She has 78 blocks. That is third on the team, despite missing those five matches to begin the year. Right, and she leads all, I'm sure, all right side players, opposites um, in blocks, at least the ones I've seen, looking at all the stats that I've looked at this season. Lutz is right up there. She's She really scores at the net as a blocker. Six foot eight out of Houston, Texas. Certainly a volleyball future awaits if she wishes it. Makes me think of Ekaterina Gamova, six foot eight, played for the Russian national women's team for a long time. Well, the service errors Stanford has had, most of them have just missed on the end line. That's one of the few that's gone into the net. Stanford, despite the service errors, still up five. That ball carries just long. Oblad hoping to fall off a shelf. One thing this Stanford team will do is they'll just continue the service pressure. They're not going to let up, even if they miss a few. They're going to just keep at it, and eventually they'll just wear you down. And I fights that one off. The ball is set low, but drawn into the net. Out of the card. Don't see enough middle hitters do that as well um, with it getting a low set and still being able to do something with it. She, uh, Tua Falamala really did a nice job with that. Plummer inside off the left hand of Dorman. X1 or rip. Depending on how you want to designate Here we got a good pass. Hentz with a perfect pass. See the sets a little inside. Almost in the middle third of the net. Fitz Morris with another tough serve. That was almost a flat hit. Lula Fon Mana with the naked two defeats all three blockers. Truman really did a nice job taking a good whack at that thing on a bad pass and um, that just gave them another opportunity. They've got to take advantage every chance they get if they get an opportunity. Now, Carly Truman does not serve, but it looked like she could have a nasty jump float based on that swing. Yeah. But she will head out now. Does not have an attempt this year. Shannon Scully comes in. She is first in aces for Utah. Freshman outside hitter. Now, there's a skill that doesn't get used a lot, overhand passing. Just out of bounds. Not too many teams overhand pass, Donshaw. Why do you think that might be on the women's side? Uh, well, the net is lower, for one thing, with the court being the same size. So it, you're getting a lot of tough sets that are coming a little bit lower at you, and I think it's a little bit better and easier to take balls with a platform. Some BBs. Yeah. Gray goes to a true float. And it goes to a lot. Almost a kick save from Plummer. All over it, count the block. 
for Tony Luofalimana. She Come really on. reacted well to that. Quick hands. Luofalimana out in the rotation. Berkeley Oblad back in. All three hitters stacked over to the left side for Stanford. This is usually a double quick situation. There's, this, there's the second option of the double quick. Back to her middle roots from last year. Moretta Lutz with a three. As long as you set that thing high enough, it's bombs away. They get a good pass in that rotation. That's a tough play to stop. There you go. Now you know what it feels like to hit a ball that way. <laughs> you at home now have an impression. Back-to-back -back kills from Lutz and Stanford is on the precipice of a 1-0 lead. Right side kill, Kenzie Kerber, second set point, Stanford. Lutz still in the right front. Alade in the middle. McClure on the left. McClure on a low set. Adora Anai on a higher one. So we will have a third set point for Stanford. That's something you don't see very often is uh, Morgan Hentz not controlling that dig that, come, that ball comes inside the block. She's, usually she's all over that with a controlled dig. The pass from Plummer. Alade. So Stanford finishes set one with a couple of pieces that haven't necessarily been clicking. They click enough there for the 25-19 first set win. Just catching up with the coaches before the match. Getting final information from Beth Lanier and Kevin Hambley. 1-0 Stanford. <laughs> Watching Pac 12. 12 volleyball matches brought to you by Tachikara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. Ampus, affectionately known as the farm, playing host to Pac 12 volleyball, presented by Tachikara. Stanford out to a 25 19 win in set number one. Welcome back inside Maples Pavilion. Kevin Barnett, Don Shaw, coach of the men and the women here at Stanford once upon a time. And Don Stanford off to a slow start, down 4 0. But no panic at all. No panic. Retta Lutz off to a slow start. Was hitting zero at, at the midpoint of this set. Well, she's five for five since then, hitting 357. So it's senior night. Why not give her the ball? Why not? She's, she can move it around. What she's really done better is transition. You can see her get off quickly, get herself in good position. She hits from such a high point, and then you never know where that ball's going. How about this right here? This is a wrinkle that Stanford has thrown in, something they can diversify their offense with. If they can pass it well enough, they can do a lot of different things. That's why when you play Stanford, you have to keep them on their heels. You can't just give them free ball and points, easy point scoring opportunities. Moreno Lutz at 3.57. You heard Don Shaw mention it was hitting zero in the mid part of this set. Five for five to end set number one. So if you're Utah right now, what'd you talk about as you switch sides? Well, you've got to handle the ball just slightly better. A lot of their passes were way far off the net, and when they did get a halfway decent pass, then the sets many times were off the net. And they've got to get things rolling here offensively, and they can't just rely on Berkeley Oblad and Adora and I. So they're the only ones taking any swings. They've got to get other people involved and in a hurry. Lutz leans into it just a little too much, and it's into the net. So it was a little low. They tend to run this play. Um, you know, they'll be in rotation six here with Lutz in the, in the left back, and they'll start matches with her like this. Utah team that leads the conference in kills only had 10 in that first set. But they had some blocks early. They get another one here early. One on one. Kenzie Kerber, you'd be talking about that one all winter. I think Jenna Gray would like to give Plummer just a little bit better set. Uh, that one was a little does, bit tight. Does it come right back? I, I would oh, not on that one. Lutz leans into another and it's long. We're off to about the same start as we were in set one. A little sloppy on Stanford side right now. See what kind of pass they get here. Yeah, it's 3-0 right now. 
Utah with the lead, and Plummer struggling to pass. Utah picks up just enough of that, and it is back to set one, 4 nothing. Well, Utah hasn't had to do it with, with offense so far. What they've got to do is side out consistently. Stanford passing with two and a half essentially there, but the half passes it. Stepped in for the short one, did Catherine Plummer. And it's 4-1, so this was the beginning, the point at which in set number one, it was a 4-1 run for Stanford to meet at five. What Utah needs to do is get a good side out rank, uh, rate going. They've got to pass the ball, get some side outs. Only the, mainly, mainly their side outs in the last set were missed serves by Stanford. Well, there has not been an ace in this match. That trend continues. There's been some rough passing and some potential opportunities and some free balls. And again, when you're when you're the underdog, you've got to take advantage of every point scoring opportunity you get. Three stacked hitters on the left now for Stanford in rotation one, so we may see that double quick again. Dorman puts one on McClure. The double quick was on. Stanford offense, all out of sorts here to start set two. Anai tried to turn it line, and there was nothing there but some hands. Well, when you said the offense was sputtering, I was going to say that they can still make up for it with their defense, especially their block. Third block of the match for this Stanford side. All right, that won't be an ace, but certainly free ball generated. Plummer didn't quite get back. She was off the court to the right. Did not make it back for the coverage. Got caught kind of, kind of standing a little too upright on that one. See her Plummer make that dive for that one play, and then suddenly she's standing straight up. And when you're 6'6 and you're standing straight up, it's hard to get low for that ball. That's what my coach always said. <laughs> Lots as that one may have touched up into the Jumbotron. So Lutz will come back and hit it again a little bit sharper. Her shot chart is uh, is just a, a spider web. They're just, there are lines all over the court when, when you uh, look at her shot chart. Improved the speed of her approach, Kevin Hamley said. We've been working with her on tempo. You can see it. She looks quite comfortable now, different than the start of the year. Nice high swing by Berkeley Oblad. She hasn't had a lot of success running behind it. And they think they have a great matchup there with McClure, but McClure's held her own and at least slowed down a few balls. Well, Oblad is third in attempts and kills. They are definitely getting her the ball, and that is a matchup that you would like to utilize. Troy in the front row now. You'll see if, she, if they bail out, she steps out as a blocker. Well, in fact, in their setting right now is Danny Bart. So the lefty, normally outside hitter. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I'm pulling. I'm going back somewhere else. I'm looking at the wrong color there. My bad, Don Shaw. I, I get away with a senior moment, but you, you're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm watching Gray on our side from the last set now. Utah continuing with the lead, and Kevin Hambly perhaps toying with the idea of a timeout. At the very least, just staying in contact with the referee crew. Just let them know you're, you're paying attention. Oh. A serve, Adora Anai with the angle. 10-3. And no longer toying with it, deciding to take it is Kevin Hambly. Slow start to the second set. Utah putting pressure on the defending champs. Well, we're back here. Are we on? Yeah, we've got uh, Adora and I. Watch how she looks forward, looks down the line, and then suddenly just cranks it across, across her body. I think most of the times you see hit servers facing and looking where they're going to serve the ball, and that time she definitely faked out Morgan Hens. Yeah, first ace of this match for either side. And now this time goes down the line. Perfect pass from Plummer, but look at the block of Utah. Look at the scoring run in this one. Utah, five straight points, trying to make it six. Truman. 
Cannot do it. Fitzmorris with a big left mitt. Not a bad idea for Utah, but the problem is when you run the pipe like they just did, Fitzmorris is right there in the middle of the court. You're setting it right in front of one of your best blockers. Stanford with plenty of work to do. Turn down the line. Crossbody chop. It's a nice shot. That's a, a great shot for an outside hitter to have is the ability to face cross court or seam and just crank it down the line across your body. Carly Truman, daughter of a couple of engineer and Utah grads, Ursula and David. Misses that block. Well, that was a beautiful delivery and swing. Gray to Fitzmorris. Jenna Gray setting it the long way, and uh, Gray really does do a good job of getting Fitzmorris all the way out to that antenna. Pac-12 volleyball presented by Tatcha Cara, Utah at Stanford. Set number two, set one, one by Stanford. In comeback fashion early, Kevin Barnett alongside Don Shaw. Thanks for joining us here just before the holiday. Morgan Hens is all over the place. And Utah is a little out of sorts in that rhythm. 11-6, Stanford creeping, John. Sneaking back in. Beth Lanier watched Stanford come back in that first set, but didn't call a timeout, let it ride. See what happens here. And it's another good spot. There's Stanford for you. It's just too much heat coming from everywhere. You may rebound a couple, but eventually they're going to get you. Well, they, even with just two hitters there with Gray in the front row, with Fitzmorris and Plummer, the capability of the ball going from anywhere between the two antennas, they, those are two pretty versatile hitters. So it was 10-3. Now all of a sudden it's 11-7. Stanford on the run. Stanford already champs in the Pac-12. Anne Marie Anderson and Holly McPeak had the call. Well, their eyes are set on the NCAA championship, but tonight they celebrate the conference title. That was the most dominant performance I've seen from a college team all season long. Stanford hit 461 as a team served the ball well, and they hit it hard and in. And like I said, both sides of the ball dominating block performance, and then off to balance with very few hitting errors for Stanford. They are in prime shape for an NCAA tournament run. Indeed, a tournament run possible as we look at their history. Tied for the lead with seven NCAA titles. 15 participations in that national title match. Unbelievable. And Don Shaw, you're a big part of those numbers. I had to, was in eight of those national title matches. Got four titles out of those eight. It's not bad. Not bad. Your batting percentage is, is right up there, man. You're going to the All-Star. All Nothing game. more fun than uh, coaching in December and uh, deep into December. I have fond memories of no sleep, video uh, analysis, um, getting sick. As soon as the season was over, I'd always get really sick over the holidays because I couldn't afford to get sick the rest of the December. Saw that at the bottom, Stanford and Penn State, the only two teams to participate in every NCAA tournament, and that will be true again this year as Penn State leads the Big Ten. Hence again. Adora Nye not there. Brianna Dorman is. That's the wrong side of the court to tip the ball to. They do not throw the ball in front of Morgan Hens. <laughs> Morgan Hens was already an outstanding libero in her freshman season, but now they brought on Taylor Formico, multiple-time Pac-12 libero of the year, to the Stanford staff. And Kevin Hambly saying that's been a tremendous benefit. Oh, I'm sure it has. It gives her a, a real role model just fresh out of college. But again, if you're if you're a fan of volleyball and you don't get to see this Stanford team play very often, you just watch Morgan Hens. She is as fun to watch as any player out there. 
Hence picking up a couple more digs during that rally, getting close to the 10 mark, and we were only partway through set number two as Utah issues their second challenge. Remember, you only get three for the whole match of this match. Looking for a touch on a player. Sid Church will check it out. My original call would be no touch. My Falls original out. call was touch, so it was awarded to Stanford. She missed the blocker there. Now remember, you're going to have to I have thought the other conclusive angle was proof the other bad. way. Yeah. Interestingly I the enough, from behind Plummer was a better one. If that ball goes out, it will affect Kevin Hambley's team and their hitting percentage. It was already down at 190 coming out of the timeout, which is far below the 461 from the title win. I thought I saw a space over the, the right hand of the outside blocker there. There's a little bit of gap right there. I do see a little gap no there. I would tend to agree with you, Don Shaw, but we will see. We will wait for the actual determination. Beth Lanier eagerly awaiting that. Could be a pretty good swing in terms of the scoreboard and the momentum at this point in the second set. Stanford has been pretty careless uh, hitting this set. Quite a few balls hit out of bounds. That's not characteristic of them. If you look at their hitting stats as a team, their errors are way below most of the other teams in the conference and in the country. Hence the 313 hitting percentage. Their kill percentage, just kills in attempts, is pretty good. And in fact, Catherine Plummer, for as many balls as she hits, probably 11 attempts per set. You know, she's she's killing the ball at about a 45% rate, which for an outside hitter is outstanding. Saw the information there on Beth Lanier. Only Dave Rubio has more years in a single program. That ball is reversed. Successful challenge. Give that point to the coach. I Put think, that in the stat sheet. I think I have a future in uh, being the being the the replay referee just put me in the in the uh, studio and all right. watching all the matches and I'll just make all make rulings on all these calls. We found a job for you for men's season. <laughs> yeah. Beth Lanier gives a high five. Actually, her team should give her a high five for that challenge. So back the other way, 12-7 now, and make it 12-8. Unfortunately, she doesn't get to keep challenges, so she's down. Has she used two now? She's, she's used got two. one left. Correct. Each team has used a timeout in this second set. You get two timeouts per set, but three challenges for the entire match. Now, if it's Morris serves, and she'll probably play right back on defense. Usually middle blockers will play left back, but they'll use her as a back row option. Yeah, I saw Fitzmorris earlier crack that ball on the right and thought, well, here's somebody else who might be making the switch no, when Moretta Lutz departs ne next year. They're not necessarily deep as far as personnel goes, but they're deep in, in a way that they can adjust and they have hitters who can do more than just one thing. Right, they were searching for a lineup last year, finally settled on one and then ripped off all those wins. Starting to rip off some points here as that was a planetary ball. Nothing but side spin and it's out of bounds. 12-10. The scratching and clawing continues by the Cardinal. That's right. They're just slowly continue to close in. Yeah, it's like the roots growing under your sidewalk. <laughs> it's more like the gophers at my house. And that will get called right there. Toes on the line. The overhand set by Brianna Dorman. You may have seen her pick up her left foot, but her right foot right. was just on the line, which means you cannot attack the ball above the level of the net. And that saved the hitter uh, an embarrassing hitting error because that roof was uh, had the extended awning on it. Costs extra. Woo! Facial, the Formico off the floor. Truman. She, she took one in warm-ups off the face. Uh, she's taking a beating tonight. That shows you what Truman's capable of, though. I think Jenna Gray will try to get that inside hand over the net a little sooner next time. Ball tight. It's got to be one or the other, and it's going to be an over call against Tony Lula Falimana. That's a tough one because the, the ball, all it has to be is just slightly over the plane of the net. And that one looked like it was, it was a part of the ball over the net. I like that she attacked the ball. You showed the yeah. referee that it's something you can reach for an attack. So many times you see players throw up the block move. Not only that, but you show the setter you're, you're willing to take a swing at it if she sticks her hands up there again. Right side. It's been a quiet night thus far by Kenzie Kerber. 
And Loretta Lutz was quiet to start, but it's been very loud since. That'll be her ninth kill. And we're tied at 13. Stanford all the way back. Well, after Lutz has hit a few balls high and hard, then when she goes to hit the ball low over the tape, the blockers tend to be reaching too high and let those ball, kind of balls go down. So that's where she gains a few more kills. Chiseling and chipping, maybe getting ready for the Utes Beach program. Second season upcoming. And I really can't be effective. That, I mean, that set's in good position there. It wasn't too far off the net. And uh, she can do a lot with the ball when she gets the right set. Tough serve finds Plummer. And the block finds her too. Triple block. Anai comes over and I think got that one. Don't see that too often in the women's game, seeing a triple block out there. But she did a nice job moving over and got great hand position. Why don't you see it in the women's game? I just think that there's no real reason to, to go up against any hitter. There are a few out there, and I would sure agree Plummer's one of them. But I just think that there aren't enough hitters out there that warrant putting three blockers up. They, the backcourt defense is pretty solid usually for most of these teams, and it's really not necessary. You don't want to get too many hitters out of position for your transition. Alade with the kill. A double quick rotation. Oh, that one fell off a shelf and found the maple boards. A serve by Plummer. Could kind of see that one coming. There's no spin on this ball. Look at that. And then it just dropped as soon as it got over the net. Not, not an inch of spin. But if you can serve at a 50% rate, point scoring to, you know, to side outs for the other team, that's that's pretty solid, one to one. Like I said, Stanford won't let up with their serve. They'll just continue to be relentlessly serving like that, and you, the pressure's on to continue to stay in there and pass. Oh, the pressure is definitely oh. on Stanford. I don't know what an eye thought there. But Stanford... And Loretta Lutz make her pay for the mistake. She lost her head there and forgot where she was. I think she just couldn't decide whether to jump and pass that, take a swing at it, kind of opted for the for the in-between. Senior moment. Yep. Yeah, she can get away with senior moment. serve once again for the Cardinal. Their pressure starting to pick up from the line. It's Hens. Yeah, it isn't just one player for the Cardinal. Hens has got a good one. There's another one. A 16 aces on the year. Very little spin. First of this match for Morgan Hens. Deep one on an eye overhand. Stanford front line right now. Loretta Lutz at six foot eight. Fitzmorris in the middle at six foot six. I wouldn't set the left side if I were other teams. Well, that's why Megan McClure will get plenty of action out there a lot of the time. But Utah seems to be just wanting to go to the hitter that goes to, they go to all the time anyway. Well, that's Truman now as an eye rotates to the back row. Oh, just pure length by Fitzmorris. Stanford saving it by the fingertips of their six foot eight, six foot six blockers. Well, J Jenna Gray was involved in that a little bit too, I believe. She did a nice job of pulling that thing back from outside the antenna. in a net violation. This is actually what Kevin Hambly wanted. When we talked to him before this match, he said, I want a team like Utah that's so capable of being good that giving us giving us some trouble, we need to have to fight. Yeah, they need to be stressed, definitely. And uh, they really haven't been a lot. UCLA gave them a tough battle last weekend. But uh, aside from that, things have gone a little too easily for them to prepare them for the NCAA tournament. 
Got a challenge now on the other side from Stanford. Kevin Hamley issues a green card. First challenge for the Cardinal. Well, there's not much, but a little bit of the jersey there. You can see the net kind of wavering in the middle. Boy, there was that was barely a touch of the net, but that I don't think that's enough to change that call. That's where the player will tell you, I did not net because they're thinking about their hands and their forearms, not the jersey. Yeah, part of their, the loose part of their jersey touches it. They don't know. And again, that one was so minuscule. For a while, the international game took away the net violations that were underneath the level of the cable. It didn't work out. A lot of talk about the national scene happening right now. This is the American Volleyball Coaches Association poll as of the 20th. And Penn State consensus number one now in a year that has seen four different teams hold that number one spot. Or probably get number one votes in one week at times. But a look at the RPI here, strength of schedule. What do you think about the, the rankings there in terms of strength of schedule? Well, it, it's, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, with Florida and Kentucky, I know they're fine teams, but the SEC is not one of the top conferences compared to the Big Ten. And That's the putting Pac it nicely. Well, so how those teams could be ranked one and two when they're consistently playing teams that are lower seeded or at least lower ranked in the RPI. So I don't know. I'm not sure. They, they use it as a tool for choosing the tournament, but, you know, there have been a couple of years when they've gone right down the line and used it completely. Chisel off the block. Let's look at the Pac-12 teams and where they sit in terms of RPI, the always critical RPI. Now, the cutoff has been, Don, in the mid to low 40s. Right. Washington State right. now at 37. Right now, they're, they're on the bubble, and uh, they've got a good chance, especially the, after having beaten Oregon at Oregon last weekend. May have played their way in. We will see Selection Sunday coming up as that ball is gaffed by Cameron Machado. If she hadn't been, had, had been able to handle that cleanly, then I think uh, Fitzmorris would have been called for going over. But so the maybe. mishandled ball came before the contact of the blocker. Nineteen sixteen. We're right back to where we were in set number one. Despite the big leads for Utah both times. Nineteen nineteen broken now to twenty nineteen. They're scrambling. Truman tries to chip that one in, hence puts it over. No way to chip against that block. 21-19, Stanford making a break. After a 10-3 deficit, here we are at Stanford 21-19. And another BB from the service line. Every single player that goes back there puts puts a tough serve on him. Stanford has more than doubled up on Utah in scoring since Utah and Beth Lanier had that big lead. Beth Lanier will burn her second time out of this second set at 22-19 as her team trails by three. The national scene taking shape in this final week. News and notes from around the nation here. Don Shaw. Here we go. Well, I'm sorry to say, don't count on any Cinderella's making it to the final four. I think you're going to see the usual suspects. Um, probably four out of those five teams, and possibly one other team, maybe like Kentucky um, or Minnesota. But uh, really the key is who gets those top four seeds and gets to host. Um, and then what the matchup will be. Matchups will be huge because some teams just don't match up with other teams quite as well. Some teams don't adjust um, during a match to certain things that teams do. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Yeah. A little uh, a little known fact, Penn State has lost five matches in a row to Nebraska. So yeah. probably that's not the team they want to see. Including a 3-0 sweep at Penn State, but that was early this year. That 27-1 record only blemished by that sweep from Nebraska.
The selection show will be happening on ESPNU. That's coming up Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific. And November 30th, everything will get underway. Field of 64, perhaps, with nine Pac-12 teams. And it will conclude in Kansas City, second weekend in December. Well, Utah needs to find a way to get on track and hopefully pull this set out because if they get down 2-0 here, they're going to have a tough time coming back. Little Fawai Lana sneaks it through, and there's life for Utah yet. Pretty good backcourt here with McClure. Formico hence for Stanford. They're only re really using two hitters here, although McClure can hit out of the back row. Good rotation for Utah with Choi out of that front row. And there it is, the block. Will Falimana next to Kerber, who picks up another stuff. I thought from my vantage point, Plummer might take that one high down the line, but she just went ahead and swung hard at it right into the block. Plummer out of the service reception. See where if they give her a different hitting pattern this time or just go to Fitzmorris. It's B. Option B. Pretty good option. After this set, we will have a 10-minute break, a little intermission. Kate Rooney will be on hand, our San Francisco studio, talk about women's volleyball, kind of players of the week, as well as some highlights from the other action that has been happening here on a busy Wednesday. Spike Knight presented by Tachikara happening right now. Inside Maples Pavilion, Kevin Barnett and Don Shaw watching Stanford try and go up 2-0 on the Utah Utes. Catherine Plummer repays the favor. She doesn't always get it done with a hit from the hitting standpoint. She can always rely on the block. Fans on their feet, 2-0 lead. Perhaps in the offing, Fitzmorris to serve. Will Flymana pushes it through, and Kevin Hamley thought they had that one. <laughs> He's doing his best Tony Robbins there on the mini tramp. Well, this rotation, Aladdy doesn't go behind the setter. So you'll see Utah gang up their blockers all in front of, of Gray here. Second set point, tough serve. KP, they call her, Catherine Plummer, 25-22. Stanford is up. What a comeback it was in the second set. Stanford leads 2 0. We'll be back for the third in a bit. At 24 in the most recent poll, UCLA 19. Utah in there. Number 15, Don Shaw, followed by SC. Well, there's some teams here that are vying for seeded spots, that top 16 seeds. Stanford trying to get that one of those top four seeds. Stanford spent some time at number one. Washington, in fact, picked to win this conference. They started out at number three. We started out at 0-0. We are at 2 nothing. Stanford leading Utah. After a second set, Don Shaw, that was very similar to an expired can of cranberry <laughs> jelly. It was just gross. <laughs> Neither team able to hit anything better than 50, not 100, right. 50. Well, of, of all the hitting errors, of only half of them have come as a result of blocks. So that means just way too many unforced hitting errors for both these teams. This, this match just hasn't found an identity yet. You know, there hasn't really been anything standing out other than I think the relentless serving pressure that Stanford puts on a team. But aside from that, we, who knows what we're going to see from here on out. Last year it took a while for Stanford to find their identity, but in the end, it was a championship identity. They would go on quite the run to finish the season. They won their last 10 matches, including six in the NCAA tournament. With four freshman starters, they would go on to defeat Texas. This was back in Columbus, Ohio, which actually held the women's and the men's championships in last school year. As number six, Stanford, 3-1 over Texas. And a lot of people thought that that might be a repeat this year. That perhaps Kevin Hambly taking over the defending champs was going to be a step above everybody else. They have been that in the Pac-12. Minus, of course, the loss to Washington. The only other team to beat them, Penn State, twice early in the year. Very early in the year. The first match, 
Moretta Lutz didn't even play. And the second time, the following week, Lutz was it was her first match back um, out of a out of a boot. So um, very early in the season, and Lutz really not much of a factor. Morgan Hens definitely a factor in this one. The libero already in double digits. 11 digs for her as Jenna Gray will get us started. Stanford in their home whites, Utah in black. Tony Lua falling mana with the kill, and she's been the best offensive force. That's now eight kills on just 10 swings, one error, despite a couple of low sets for number 20. And we want to wish her mother a continued speedy recovery after a nasty motorcycle accident that unfortunately took the life of her husband a few weeks ago. Tony has been spending a lot of time back here in California with her family, but returning for matches with her Utah Utes. That ball set out of bounds, and Sanford finally off to a decent start. They were down 4-0 in both of the previous two sets. Well, that first play that Utah ran the middle, they really needed that. They got a good pass. They got a quick set in the middle. They've just got to pass the ball better and start di diversifying their offense just a little bit. Free ball, free points for the Cardinals. One thing Aladdie has done uh, to improve in the middle is she's she's getting herself clear of the net and she's giving herself a good angle. She's facing the net and looking and seeing the block in the net way better than she was earlier in the year. That that transition away from the net really helps middle hitters instead of running along the net. Hands down the line, 12th dig. That one skips off a plumber. Adora and I, you talk about stats per something. I think per swing, Adora and I exerts the least amount of energy, at least outwardly, it appears. Right, right. She doesn't look like she's taking a real strong, hard approach. She just kind of, you know, kind of wanders, kind of meanders her way under the ball. Player who's going to get a look internationally and certainly wants to continue her athletic endeavors. There's a dig. Adora Nye couldn't get the kill there, but she has gotten oh so many in her career. Look at that, eight, over 1,800 kills. And the digs, the double-doubles, she has filled the stat sheet. The career attempts is what impresses me. That's a lot of swings. <laughs> her shoulder, her arm is still attached at this point. That's in the rally score era. Choi with the cover, as that was a one-on-one -on -one block. That's what you're talking about, Don Shaw. And Anai converts the opportunity, but not blocking with your right front. Interesting strategy. Yeah, well, if you're going to keep that shorter setter in, in the game, if you can get the other team away from the net with their offense, then you've got the opportunity to do that. If you've got a big middle blocker who can penetrate, why not go with a one-blocker defense? 3-3, three, three, Adora and I with nine kills in the service. Plummer, bad pass. More nice defense from the Utes. Sticking in his Kerber. Blasting away are the Cardinal. Couple good rallies, uh, uh, you know, nice digs. Good exchanges there in that rally. That time, Choi chose to block. Entering the match for Utah in this third set. Launga Ungalta, number five. She'll be in the left front here. And have to deal with the backslide of Adriana Fitzmorris. She's not as tall as Truman, but uh, she may provide them a little bit more ball control. We'll see. Fitzmorris, just her fourth kill. Yeah, there, really, there are no uh, offensive stats that jump out at you at all in a positive way. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to add that for you there, Don. You and I were looking at the stats, and it's because there's been a fair amount of blocking. That now 
six blocks for Stanford, and it'll be eight and a half for Utah. And plenty of touches too, control touches. So there have there have not been a lot of kills. The kill percentage has been very low here tonight. For the match, Stanford hitting 198 to Utah's 107. Keep in mind these are teams that normally hit above 250, and in Stanford's case, above 300. All-out effort from Galta, but it's not enough. 6-5. No real rhythm to this third set. Well, there hasn't been any rhythm to the to the match so far. I figured after the break, we might get a little bit more rhythm in this third set. What are you left to do as a coach? Well, right now, there's not much. I mean, like I said, Stanford is putting some service pressure on Utah like they always do, and they're really not doing anything different. I think they've just made a few more unforced errors than they usually do, but I wouldn't change anything if I was Kevin Hambly. I just think Utah just needs to spread it out a little bit and, and attack from different areas. Well, they brought in a new player to do it. Mgauta in there. National Player of the Year in junior college last year. She will hit the ball hard. Hitting the ball smart that time is Kenzie Kerber. Even though she's going against uh, Plummer out there on that side, they, they got to get her the ball a little bit more often and just you know quit relying solely on an eye. To your point. Kerber has 11 attempts, Anai has 28. On the other side, Plummer with now her 23rd attempt. Lutz with 24, Fitzmorris with 17. A little bit more evenly distributed. Well, Truman had 18 when she was in, but was hitting negative. Great with the defense. Joust ball, Plummer, O-T. Great bump set by Lutz. That's a play you couldn't expect in her early in her career. Beach That's team right here, 6'8 nice and 6'6. Six, six. How about that? Not big. Look at this one. Yeah, here's a combo. And Plummer took a great rip at it. I think they've got a touch on the block, whether it was in or out on the, on the end line. Outstanding cover by Kerber. Hence with a touch, is there enough space? Indeed. Smart set and the touch going quick. Well, Hens is going to make the effort. There's a great effort by McClure. Off all the way to the bleachers. That's a, and that's quite a run in this place. Plummer fights off another one and then bangs it off the block. What do you do about the passing in number two? The passing, I would personally try to spread her platform, and not her platform, spread her base, get her feet wider and have her shuffle her feet and get a little bit wider base so she's a little bit more balanced. It just seems to me when she gets in trouble, she, her base narrows and then you, she loses balance. And for a tall player, I think that's really important. You have to become a small player when you're back there. Alade with the block. One on one off the near ace from Plummer. See if she can skip another one off the equipment. We've talked a lot about the play at Morgan Hens, but let's not forget about Brianna Dorman on the other side. The bio major who wants to be in pediatric, pediatric dentistry, sophomore who has also been outstanding in terms of defense and passing. Yes, yeah, she has done a really nice job. She's passed the ball pretty well when they've served her. She doesn't get served very often. Plummer is in that right back receiving. Let's see if Utah tries to find her. Kerber can't get there. Instead, she goes back to the left of the libero. Took it down the line. That's a tough ball. She serves it from that position right down the line, and it has any movement to it. I was wondering where McClure was. I got blocked out by the referee stand. I wonder how Kerber would have called that one. She wants to be a sports broadcaster. Loretta Lutz has been pretty quiet lately. And 
And over once again, exact same play, just the right toe of Brianna Dorman touching the line. And you heard no, no, no. I think that was J.J. Van Neal on the sidelines, also known as Magnum P.I., saying you should not hit that ball above the level of the net. That ball out of bounds, and now it's Stanford with a two-point advantage. And there is a look at Tom Selleck, big <laughs> fan of volleyball. I actually just saw a picture of him at the Volleyball Hall of Fame. Cover, and then put down. That's fun being 6'8", isn't it? You can't teach 6'8". She didn't have to move. Block made a nice block move, first of all. Reached out a little bit, but the ball came off the cover right to that right hand. That ball wide. Will we see a challenge? Uh, Kevin Hambly was calling that in. Why not go to Lutz in that situation? Well, you know, again, they've got options to use. And, and to me, running the, the middle hitter right in front of the setter in the middle of the court, that's the last thing I want to set is in a free ball situation is that one right in front of the other team's middle blocker. Don, I see so many times in volleyball in those bang, bang plays that the setter will go quick when their middle really isn't there and get composed. Right. Dig by Hens. Dorman, another nice move. Ooh, there's an angle. Nice play by Gray. Now here's a point scoring opportunity for Utah to could capitalize on. And they do. Berkeley Obland, just her third kill. Nice dig by Gray. Oblad the Oblad negative. Get off in the middle there and make herself available quickly. That ball did not go to Plummer. Yeah, they've kind of gone away. They've gone after McClure. I think they're trying to go after McClure since she was the front row outside hitter, trying to keep that outside hitter busy and gang up on the, on the middle hitter, especially with Gray in the front row. Billy Chusett, our producer and astute viewer of volleyball. Picking up on the service of Utah as Danny Barton gets the kill there. There's Danny Barton. Yeah, she hasn't seen much action from a hitting standpoint. Utah Gatorade Player of the Year last year. Paul and Mickey Barton, a pair of two-sport athletes at Utah. Paul played on the football team. Mickey playing mainly basketball. Remember meeting her down at USC earlier this year. Stanford carries a two-point lead here in the third. Will they be able to close it with a sweep? This Pac-12 volleyball match is brought to you by Tachikara. We've got the ball. You bring the game. Beautiful warm night in Stanford as the Pac-12 volleyball season is about to come to a close at Cal is where Stanford goes next. That's all they have left after this one. That'll be Saturday, 7 p.m. You can watch it on Pac-12 now or Pac-12 Bay Area. Thanks for spending your pre-Thanksgiving evening with us. Kevin Barnett and Don Shaw, Pac-12 volleyball presented by Tatcha Cara with Stanford leading 15-13 and two sets to none. Both of the first two sets were comeback efforts from the beginning. This third set has been a bit more even and not necessarily prettier than the second set. Not much, but a little. Offensively, both teams have picked it up just a little bit, and Utah is actually siding out at about a 66% rate, which is pretty darn good. Problem is, Stanford is up their side out percentage to 76, and that's going to get it done most of the time. Gauta rips it. There's the bump set with the foot over. That's legal. And Gauta unloads and puts it in bounds. Transfer out of Northwest Community College. That's in Wyoming. Not a touch call there. One thing Stanford does a good job of when they just have to keep a ball in play, they'll make that other setter handle the ball. And when you're running a 6-2, your setter, you're going to have a setter in the back row all the time. So there goes the middle attack, and then you've got to go high outside against this Stanford block. 
Gauta rips right through the net. I like the explosiveness of number five. Yeah, she definitely brings a, a, a dynamic athleticism to that, to that front court, even though she's not one of their taller players. She's in there for some offense and getting some opportunities. Oh, cross court heater. <laughs> I'm wearing headsets and I heard that one pretty nice and loud. She got all the wood on that one. Sanford trying to close, Utah trying to hang on. And another big block by Kerber, who's been outstanding at the net defensively. Surprised Plummer didn't try to go away from her body a little bit on that one. She was one-on-one, -on -one and she's kind of just swung across her body right into the right side blocker. But Kerber made a nice play. Each team with their full complement of timeouts. Three up against Plummer, who hits it further than 30 feet. Again, Stanford with a few unforced errors. Plummer out of the service reception. Two hitters, a laddie staying in front. She, even though she ran behind Gray on that play, she, she had no intention of being set. Outstanding reaction from Gray. Creates that opportunity. And the left front is the Bermuda Triangle of Diggs. That is correct, sir. Yeah, Utah really hasn't taken advantage of the few rotations that Stanford has that where they can actually gang up on hitters. I haven't seen enough of that if you're Utah. The numbers are outstanding for Lua Falimana. 10 kills on 15 attempts, hitting 600. They just have had too many uh, sets inside the six foot area. They haven't gotten them. It's turning into the Catherine Plummer show for Stanford. It's always been the Adora and I show for Utah, 18-18. And it's amazing to me how often she seems to be stuck underneath the ball. She gets in there and she, she has to almost stop before she leaves the ground and swing. So Anai is still under 100 for the match, but it could be that she kills her next eight balls. And then you have no memory of what the numbers used to look like. That one tipped over the top in the double quick by Lutz. Crunch time coming. Just about over 20. How do you close sets? Always a question. Well, they can get a good enough pass. I would imagine they're going to try Oblad over McClure. That one took the Jumbotron. Gray has to reach. No touch, no net. Ball out of bounds. Point Stanford. 2018. You have two timeouts. Do you burn one? This could be the time, but they've got a they've got a side out here. This is pretty critical. At this point. Beth Lanier lets it ride. Now we'll definitely see the TO. That scud missile out of bounds. 21-18. Beth Lanier burns one as Kim Pickering could be in the final moments <laughs> of his. Volleyball refereeing career. 38 great years for Kim Pickering. He's out, but many of these players we're about to show you will be back. Who could be player of the year inside the Pac-12? Well, there's a few candidates, two of whom are on the floor right here tonight, Don. Well, here again, Adora and I, huge hitting load. Mary Kate, Marshall. Mary Kate Marshall, she has carried the Beavers. Khalil in here, just a sophomore. And then Catherine Plummer, who you've watched a lot of here tonight. Another sophomore. Adding on to her attempts. Another 32 times. A look at some of the accolades for these athletes. 
basketball. Mary Kate Marshall really has stepped up her game. I, I thought after watching her as a freshman and sophomore that it was going to be hard to improve on, on those performances, but she really has gotten better, and she's got a nice supporting cast around her this season. Mark Barnard brought in Ron Zwerver. Outstanding international experience there. As you look at the Offensive Player of the Week, two times for Catherine Plummer. Talking about some defense probably there with Formico. Maybe the defense of Utah against her swings. Well, we'll see how much territory she takes over there, serve receive. With um, Hanson, I'm trying to look around the, the post here. Oh, McClure. Well, we're going to get service yeah, first. Yeah, they're going to get service first. And again, you've oh. got corner back there on the backside. Benai and Oblad also in there. This should be a pretty good offensive rotation for Utah. Miscommunication out of the timeout. A serve, not the time to give that one away. Boy, since 18 all, there's been a, a hitting error and, a, and an ace. 22-18. Nearly 23 on that serve. The attempted chip is out. And Stanford is two away. Timeout called by the Utah Utes. Stanford looking like they're in control. And Moretta Lutz trying to make one more run now here on senior night. Putting on a good show at 1.5 for five to close the first set. 12 kills, 259. It's those four blocks that have been impressive as well. Moving from middle blocker to opposite. Not the easiest transition, Don. Not the easiest okay. transition at all for we're gonna, we're gonna Loretta Lutz, but she has made it capably in her senior year on the right-hand side. We'll see what they do in this rotation. I think they've got to go to corner on the backside against McClure. So Utah now out of timeouts. Burning them both. Trying to hang on here in the third. Kevin Barnett alongside Don Shaw inside Maples. Final regular season tilt for the home crowd here. Stanford, although likely to be back. Will they host? Will they be a top four? Will they host a regional round? Last year's regional round was absolutely incredible. It was must-see TV. A couple of comeback wins. BYU looked like they had Texas beat and lost. I think it was up at Wisconsin. Well, that regional semifinal, the regional final, is, is those are some of the best matches uh, all year long. Well, X play for Anai who sneaks it through Lutz. The Stanford block was all over it. Yeah, they didn't really fool anybody on that. Now point scoring. And unfortunately for Utah, Bailey Choi in the front row. We'll see if the, I think they wanted to make a sub and it's too late now. They were going to put a blocking sub in for Choi. Yeah, Barton was making a move but never got there. Doesn't end up mattering on that matchup. But it may here. One on one, and that ball is going to go out of bounds. Too much heat by McClure. She has been snappy as of late, McClure, putting a lot of heat on the ball. This is match point number one. The book of an eye read by Jenna Gray. Maybe she didn't make it to chapter two. She's going to take that high hard swing. Match now they're going to go for the blocking sub. So here comes the 6-2. They'll put them both in. Here comes Danny Barton alongside Cameron Machado. So Barton will be in that right front. Expect to see a lot of Danny Barton starting next year. Got a couple of, got a couple of lefties out there that they can use on the right side. 
Adora and I jumped the gun there. No whistle from Kim Pickering. Wants to make sure he gets one last time. Good job, Kim. Ace serve from Adora and I. Great short serve. I'm surprised we haven't seen that earlier tonight. Match point three. Stanford still with two timeouts, but Kevin Hamley maybe wanting to learn something about his team. The crowd thinks they're a part of it. Here we go. Backslide. Fitzmorris closes it out. 25-21 the final in three. Kevin Hambly and his crew moved to 18 and one in conference play, win their only matchup against Beth Lanier and the Utah Utes. They'll move to 25 and three overall. They have just Cal remaining. Utah will fall to 12 and seven. First time they've lost in three matches. They are 21 and nine overall, and they are as well going dancing. Question for them is, will they get seeded into the tournament? I don't think a loss to Stanford probably hurts you in that endeavor. They will go to Colorado next. That is their only remaining match on the schedule. Let's go, Let's go down to Don Shaw with Morgan Hentz, libero from Stanford. Okay, here I am with Morgan Hentz. Here we are with Morgan Hentz. Morgan, nice job tonight. Thank you. One thing I've noticed about not only your outstanding hustle and defense, but your passing has improved, I think, this year. Have you really put in a lot of work on your passing? Yeah, definitely. Passing is definitely a mental thing, so really focusing and talking with your teammates about it is really important. My teammates have definitely helped me out with that. We're headed to the NCAA tournament. Possible top four seed. We'll see how that goes. But how do you feel about going into the tournament this year as opposed to last year? Yeah, I think we're feeling pretty confident, but we need to remember that anyone can win on any given day, and we just have to take it one step at a time. All right, that's it. Morgan, thanks a lot. Morgan Henson, Stanford, victorious in three sets over the Utah Utes. Lots of big matches still yet to go in this season. Penn State will take on Wisconsin and Minnesota. That has implications for Stanford in the national scene. Only time that Beth Lanier and Kevin Hamley got to see one another was in this match, and Kevin Hamley and his squad victorious. For my entire Pac-12 crew, including my partner, Don Shaw, I'm Kevin Barnett saying goodbye, good night from Stanford. Congratulations, Cardinal, and wishing the best of luck to all the Pac-12 teams headed to the NCAA tournament.